again everybody it's the history nerd i'm back in the man cave and in this video we're going to do something a bit different than usual uh, i just ordered a pair of brand new cowboy boots from the justin boot company website through the miracle of two-day federal express shipping they arrived on my front porch this morning i've not yet opened the box because i thought it would be fun if you and i unboxed these boots and took a first gander at them together uh, now before i open this box let me give you a little background on justin boots because i am the history nerd um, justin boots was founded by a, name, by a guy named herman joseph daddy joe justin uh, who learned the cobbler's trade in the mid 1800s and began his career by opening a boot repair service in Spanish Fort, Texas, which was located on the Chisholm Trail. That's the trail that all the cowboys had to follow when they were taking their cattle to Kansas and to the meat markets in the West. So it was a high traffic area, location, location, location. Uh, Daddy Joe Justin's boot repair service proved so successful he thought that there was a need for handmade custom boots on the Chisholm Trail, so he borrowed $35 from the barber whose shop he used to house his boot repair service. Uh, Daddy Joe Justin opened his own storefront in Spanish Fort, Texas in 1879, and business took off from there. By 1910, Justin boots were being sold in 26 states, Canada, Mexico and Cuba, and in 1910, a brand new pair of custom Justin boots would set you back $11, which translates to about $300 today with inflation. Now, after Daddy Joe Justin died, his children and grandchildren continued to operate the boot company. Uh, it acquired other boot companies. Just, uh, Justin Boots owns Nakona Boots, which was actually started by one of Daddy Joe Justin's daughters. They own the Chippewa Shoe Company, and they also bought, at some point, Tony Llama Boots. Now, uh, Tony Llama is a great name for a guy who makes cowboy boots. That sounds like a guy who would make cowboy boots. And that's the founder of Tony Llama Boots' real name, Tony Llama. Uh, but the truth of the story is Tony Llama was born in Syracuse, New York, six months after his Italian immigrant parents moved to the United States. And there is a picture of Tony Llama holding a pair of cowboy boots that he'd made in the 1930s. And Tony Llama is wearing a cowboy hat, a cowboy shirt, and a cowboy tie. He's got the whole Western thing going on. He's decked out as much as he can be like a cowboy. But there is no person in the history of humanity that's probably looked less like a cowboy than Tony Llama. He looks like a guy he was born in Syracuse, New York, to Italian immigrant parents, and rather than making cowboy boots, he should probably be throwing pizza dough up in the air in a pizzeria somewhere. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, Justin Boots continued to grow, and in the year 2000, uh, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway acquired Justin Boots, and it remains in the Warren Buffett portfolio today. So that's the history of Justin Boots, and I think now is a good time for us to open up this box and see what bad boys are inside. Mm, mm, mm. They look just like they did on the website. My friends, here are my new Justin cowboy boots. Now I know you are saying to yourself, heavens to Betsy history nerd, you are a conservative looking, overweight old guy. Why did you buy a pair of tricked out, pimpy gangster looking boots like those? Um, let me tell you folks, uh, you're probably familiar with the middle-aged women who dress very conservatively on the outside, dress like librarians on the outside. 
but underneath they're wearing the trashy underpants they bought from that Frederick guy out in Hollywood. Well, these boots are my version of trashy underpants. The part of the boot that the public will see is quite conservative, but when I have these boots on, I will know that there's a party going on in my pants leg. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that may be the new slogan for my YouTube channel, History Nerds Man Cave, it's a party in your pants leg. Um, but truth be told, folks, I am a rather conservative guy, but if I could get away with it, I would walk around all day, every day, in one of those rhinestone nudie suits that the country music stars wore in the 50s and 60s. So anyway, I'm very excited about the look of these boots. Now these boots are from the Justin Punchy collection, uh, which they say is inspired by the vintage historic boots made in the company's past. Uh, this particular model is called the Dane, the D-A-Y-N-E. Uh, I don't know what that word or what that name means, but they call them the Dane. Uh, they retail for $240, but I caught them on sale for a hundred bucks off. So I paid 140 bucks for these boots. Um, uh, these are called Stockman boots. This style of boot is called Stockman boots. Uh, there's really uh, three major kinds of cowboy boots. There's the, there's the traditional cowboy boots. Those are made for riding horses. The reason cowboy boots have a pointed toe is because they're easier to slide into a stirrup. And the reason they have a tall heel is because you can hook it on the back of the stirrup and it's easier to keep your foot in a stirrup. So you have the traditional cowboy boot. The next kind of cowboy boot is a roper boot. Those are made for riding and walking. Roper boots are shorter boots. They have the pointed toe so you can fit the boot into the stirrup easy, e easily, but they have a short walking heel on them because their boots made for riding and walking. These are called stockman boots. These are walking and working boots. These boots don't have the pointed heel, uh, the, the, the pointed toe. These boots have a wide toe and they have a walking heel. So these boots are made for working on the ranch, not riding, and they're made for walking. Um, uh, you've probably noticed the extravagant of, uh, electric blue color as well as the innate stitching on these boots. Part of the reason they say these boots are a throwback to Justin's vintage era is Daddy Joe Justin uh, discovered back in the 1800s, cowboy boots would sag. The leather was not very strong, and when you wore the boots, they would sag and gather around your ankle, and when you took them off, they would flop over the top of the boot. Uh, Daddy Joe Justin was among the bootmakers who discovered that if you add heavy ornate stitching at the top of the boot, it would reinforce the top of the boot and act almost like rebar uh, or, or a support structure, the stitching would, that would keep the boot up. So that's why these boots have the ornate stitching. As I said, they've got the wide toe. They've got the stitching on the vamp. The part of a boot that shows when you're standing up, this is called the vamp. This part of the boot is called the shaft. <laughs> yes, I, I said it. This is the shaft. And what's most impressive about these boots is the shaft I'm holding is 11 inches in length. Uh, so uh, you've got uh, a caramel colored vamp, you've got an 11 inch shaft, you've got a one and three eighths inch uh, composite walking heel. It's got the rubber on the bottom, but uh, looks like some synthetic wood in the middle. Um, the bottom of these boots have a leather outer sole, which is quite nice, that's quite nice and the traditional brass nails affixing the outer sole 
to the boot. Now, uh, you've heard the phrase, let's get down to brass tacks. No one is 100% sure where that phrase came from. But one theory is that it refers to the brass tacks, just like these, that affix the outer sole to the bottom of U.S. Army cavalry boots. Uh, the longer the cavalrymen wore their boots, the, the pointed end of the brass tack would wear through the inner sole and stick in the cavalry officers and soldiers' feet. And that was called getting down to brass tacks. That's one theory of it. So uh, let me look on the inside and see what uh, uh, we've got uh, good leather on the inside. It looks like uh, just regular cowhide. I'm trying to read what it says and it does not exactly say, but uh, there you go, folks. Uh, that is the Dane cowboy boot. Um, I am happy with it. And what I think I'm going to do at this point is uh, I'm going to put these boots on and I'm going to wear them for a few hours. And then I'm going to come back and revisit y'all and share with you my opinion of the Justin Boots Punchy Collection Dane boot once I've worn it for a few hours. So y'all just hold tight. So folks, I've been walking around for a couple hours in these brand new Justin Punchy Collection Dane boots, and they feel like they are already broken in. I believe they are the most comfortable boots I have ever worn. Justin swears by its J-Flex inner sole system, and while I think that stuff is usually marketing, purely marketing, uh, these are some comfortable dadgum boots. Now, I have read online that uh, the J-Flex system is half leather from the heel to the midsole, it's leather, and then from the midsole to the toes, it's cloth. And I have read some complaints online that after you wear these boots for a long time, the cloth portion of the insole begins to fray. But look, look folks, uh, you know, these boots are not gonna get a big workout from me. It ain't like I'm gonna oil up and wear these boots while I'm playing beach volleyball with Goose and Maverick. I'm gonna wear these boots walking up and down the hallways of my office. So I think they will be just fine. So at this point, having just owned them and worn them for a couple of hours, I will tell you that I am quite happy with my purchase of the Justin Boots Punchy Collection Dane Boot. And I will uh, invite you to remember that if you ever happen to run into the old history nerd and you see that I am wearing a pair of caramel colored cowboy boots, you will know that folks, there's a party in my pants leg going on. So uh, there you go. That's, uh, that's this video, that's the unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I always say, if you liked this video and wanna see more content just like it, I need you to do three things for me. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and ring that bell. So the next time the History Nerd comes forward with a brand new video premiere to share with you, you will be notified. I will close this video as I close all of my videos by, uh, by asking you from the very bottom of my heart to please be good, be well, be happy, and goodbye, folks. <laughs>